let's get started. Oh man, for the record, that was actually um, sparkling water. I just um, I need to get some hydration in. <sighs> All right, so let's answer the big question today. Why the fuck is it so hard to lose fat while drinking regularly? We have the answers. Also guys, if you're having a drink while watching this, comment below what you're actually drinking so we can all have a little giggle at it and hit subscribe if you want me to bring you another drink after you finish that one as well. It's a double service here. Let's get stuck straight in. Alcohol and weight loss. How does it actually impact you? Why is it so challenging to actually lose body fat while drinking? I'm gonna touch on the actual science behind alcohol, how it affects your body. So we're gonna break down what happens to your actual body, but I'm also gonna touch on some of the behavioral changes which happen after you have a couple of drinks. So you wanna have your cake and eat it too. And by cake, I mean alcohol. And by habit, I mean six pack. You wanna have it all and I love that ambition. And let's face it, drinking's pretty fun. So let's actually break it down so you have the information that you need to get the best results with your training, but also enjoy yourself on the weekend. For those drinking alcohol while you're watching this, I'll give you the quick answer is that yes, you can lose weight while drinking. So you can keep sipping along while I'm going through this video. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about weight loss, but a better question is fat loss. Cause when people say they wanna lose weight, they usually mean body fat. The real simple answer to this is that you need to be in a calorie deficit whenever you wanna lose weight. That is the only way that you can lose weight. There are no exceptions to that rule. Now, alcohol in its most purest form is actually the fourth macronutrient. Most people only refer to three, which is proteins, carbs, and fats, but alcohol is actually the fourth one. What this means is that pure alcohol is actually energy. In alcohol, there are seven calories per gram. Fat itself is nine calories per gram, and then protein and carbs are four calories per gram. What this means is that no matter what type of alcohol that you're consuming, it's gonna have seven calories per gram. So what this means really simply is it actually does increase your calorie intake whenever you drink. It is always gonna be an energy balance when it comes to weight loss, so this is the first thing to keep in mind. And when you break it down to the other macronutrients, alcohol in its purest sense is the second most dense form of pure calories behind pure fat. So it's quite dense. So while there still are a lot of other factors in play, when you start to drink, you are consuming energy, which is calories. So this can obviously impact that energy balance. All right, the second thing I wanna to go to is what actually happens when you drink? So whenever you drink alcohol, it is absorbed in the bloodstream. Now after this, it actually goes directly to the liver. Now alcohol is actually a poison when you drink and there is no storage areas in your body for alcohol itself. So whenever you drink, your body's priority is to try to excrete or get rid of that alcohol within your body. So this means a couple things. If you've eaten before you start drinking or while you're drinking, your body is trying to get rid of the alcohol first as a priority because it's a poison, it's in your bloodstream as well. It's trying to get rid of that completely. This means a couple different things. Number one, you're not absorbing the other nutrients as efficiently as you could normally, which means the benefits of having things like protein actually decrease when you drink because that is the priority for the body at that time. This means that all other nutrients are effectively put on the back burner while your body tries to get rid of the alcohol. What this means from a body fat perspective is that your body will actually try to store carbs and fats as a higher priority versus alcohol, which it cannot store. So you're not getting the full benefit of the nutrients, which is important for things like muscle stimulus. The body's also trying to store other types of macronutrients nutrients while it's trying to get rid of that alcohol. Now, while this is true, it still doesn't override the energy balance I mentioned in the first part, but it's something to consider. So in terms of a recommendation, you could do things like lower fat for that day as an example to try to reduce the impact of this. It also can increase insulin levels within your body, which can reduce the impacts of things like fat loss. So these are, again, little factors which do come into play when it comes to fat loss. Now, I know I've spoken about weight loss, but I actually wanna talk about fat loss because that is a different thing to actually losing weight. Losing weight can mean a number of different things. It can also mean losing muscle. So what happens to things like muscle protein synthesis when it comes to drinking alcohol? First thing is when you do drink excessive amount of alcohol, it can significantly reduce a male's testosterone levels by up to 45%. This is gonna have a big impact on how your muscles recover and the protein synthesis within men. Now we do know that when you drink post-training, it actually reduces the anabolic effect. In simple terms, this means that your muscle recovery just simply isn't as good. The reason why this is important is because you want your body to absorb the nutrients and rebuild your muscles back up, which is important to increase strength and also muscle hypertrophy. By drinking alcohol, you're actually blocking a lot of these things, so you reduce the impact of training. The other thing that we know is when you drink alcohol, it can actually increase satiety. This means that it can actually make you hungrier. So not only are you consuming calories when it comes to alcohol itself, you actually feel hungrier when you do drink. Of course, the impact on weight doesn't happen unless you actually eat something, but this is another factor that comes into play. Now, because performance is important when it comes to things like training and how you build muscle, let's go a bit into that as well. It does 
does increase dehydration, which is not very good for performance. And quality of sleep also comes into play because this is actually when your muscles grow itself. When you drink, you get worse REM sleep. REM is rapid eye movement. So this is that real deep sleep you get. It's important to get REM sleep because when you do, that is when you get the real recovery part. That's when you get that good night's rest, which is actually gonna help you in terms of your mental capacity and your physical capacity. So as much as you may get to sleep faster when you've been drinking, you don't get as much deep sleep as you do when you don't drink. So again, this just affects performance. My last point on here, and this sounds like a bit of an obvious one, is it does affect your performance the next day if you're gonna train. So you may wanna schedule a rest day the next day. So you're a little tired, you're dehydrated, your protein synthesis hasn't worked as well. It's not the best time to train. So it does impact your performance the following day. Now let's talk behaviorally what can happen when you do have a few drinks. Now, while this isn't a direct consequence of alcohol, this is what does happen quite frequently. <laughs> I know from experience. All right, when you drink alcohol, generally speaking, satiety's up and you wanna have more greasy foods. People generally make worse decisions when their guard is down. And this is particularly important when it comes to food. Even the next day, you're probably feeling a little bit hungover. You just wanna have some pizza, a roll, a wrap, something like that that you wanna eat at home. Because you're more tired, you're generally moving a little bit less as well. Now, while this is in training, walking less, less steps can actually impact the amount of calories that you burn that day or the next day. And usually this is in a reduced state the following day after you drink. So it makes you hungrier, you move less, it's got calories in it, you make worse decisions, you don't burn fat as well, and it reduces the impact of how it recovers your muscles. Now it's not all bad and that's just the science behind it. You can still drink and lose weight. The key here is moderation. Now one of the reasons why I love things like four or six week challenges or eight week challenges is you can reduce alcohol for a shorter period of time, which can create changes within your body. And then you can go back to more of a maintenance phase, which may be drinking more regularly. You don't have to give up alcohol totally. And this is something that I really want to get through. I drink regularly and it's totally fine, but you may just want to limit the amount of times you do it in a month, for example, or you can do an aggressive weight loss phase where you're not drinking alcohol and then go back to drinking it. You can make smarter decisions. So things that are lower in sugar, for example, are going to have less calories in them. Bear in mind, alcohol still has calories. So it's like jumping out of the 15th floor instead of the 30th. It's still going to hurt, but maybe not hurt so much and you might actually survive. Now, I also think that the goal is not to be so militant with everything to give up everything that's fine in life for an extra 2% body fat loss. Enjoy your weekends, have fun. And also when you start to reduce your alcohol, when you do actually drink, it's actually way more fun. You make an event out of it. Of course, you can still keep drinking regularly throughout the year and you know you're still moving towards your goal, which again is probably more of a personal thing, but that's the way I prefer to approach it. So the simple matter of this one, guys, is just moderate how much you drink, understand how it works with your body and really try to hold your cravings back when you do actually drink and make sure maybe you plan like rest day after you can have some alcohol. And that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel down below for more videos. And if you made it this far, I'll give you guys a fun fact. If you drink alcohol, which is low in sugar, you actually get drunk faster. Why? It's because your body doesn't have to break down the sugar as well as the alcohol. So if you have a low sugar alternative, your body can break down the alcohol faster, which gets into your bloodstream faster, which makes you drunk faster. But be safe. <laughs> Thanks guys for watching.